Morning, bonjour à tous. Uh, je suis ici en tant que bénévole uh, représentant uh, le YMCA de, du nord de, de l'Alberta. Uh, C'est un honneur uh, d'être ici. C'est un honneur d'être ici, particulièrement comme youth délégat. That photo is actually taken in El Salvador, where I've been doing a lot of work over the last 10 years on a youth violence prevention project. And one of the things about being with the Y, particularly this year now that all of the youth delegates are with us, uh, it really does keep you young to be around young people. So thanks to everybody who has done a, such a great job in incorporating the youth voice into the YMCA in recent times. Uh, I just love being in a gym. I just love being around young people. And uh, it's a real thrill to be here at this meeting. I'm waiting for slides to come up here. We'll see how it works. There we go. Uh, the Y and I. Um, we do go back a long way. Actually, we go back, uh, I think. Do we go back? Do we go forwards? OK, we can wait. Just talk amongst yourselves for a moment here. <laughs> oh, no, that didn't work. OK, here we go. We're trying again. Okay, next slide, here we go, we'll do this as a... Okay, I go back into the middle of the last century, actually, uh, with the YMCA. Um, that's the old 4th Street Y in Niagara Falls, for those of you who uh, may know the Ontario scene. It's not there anymore, it was uh, taken down. And if you look at the picture on the right, the guy uh, with the glasses and the big basketball there is a guy named John Peckham, thank you very much. And uh, when I returned to Niagara, uh, to take a job at Rock University, I found that John Peckham was still volunteering at the Y 50 years later. It was quite an interesting kind of phenomenon. But that's me in the lower right kneeling down. I don't, don't quite know what happened, actually. I had good, such great potential. But, uh, <laughs> but this is about my very first experience, actually, playing basketball, which became a huge part of my life. I coached for a long time at university in senior women's, and I played university basketball. This was my first experience with it. The Y o is something that uh, formed a lot of my attitudes towards sport, physical education, physical activity very, very early on in life. That was taken, I think, in 1958 or 59, I can't remember. Uh, but a long time passes really, really quickly, and uh, you know, 30 years later, I found myself uh, back in Niagara. That's just uh, the basic map of Canada there. You can see if you follow the squares along, I did start with the YMCA in a more formal governance sense at the uh, YMCA of Niagara, moved to Winnipeg, uh, and um, now in Edmonton, if we're ever thinking of opening one in Dawson City, I'm your man. I've just got a trajectory happening there. So I just wanted to put you on notice that I'm available uh, for, for future service. This particular governance journey, uh, I took a job at Brock University as the Dean of the Faculty of Applied Health Sciences and moved to the University of Winnipeg as provost there. And then a fabulous opportunity came to move to Edmonton to become provost at McEwen University. And along the way, I've been really, really fortunate to have been asked to sit on three different boards. When Mary Ann asked me to do this, and thanks to Mary Ann and others for asking me to be here today, uh, when she asked me to do this, essentially it appeared to me that my main claim to being able to do this was that I hadn't been able to keep a job for very long. But along the way, uh, I've been on three different Y Association boards. The, uh, the new building down in the lower right there is the West Niagara YMCA, uh, recently built the last few years. The iconic Vaughn Street building in Winnipeg is the downtown Y. And then the fabulous Welcome Village in, uh, in Edmonton, which represents a really new way for the Y in Edmonton, Northern Alberta, to to look at it, the homeless, homelessness issue and a way of really helping people in the inner city. And along the way, um, I began with Steve Butts as the CEO and president, and my time on the board there caused Steve to move to Vancouver. <laughs> Uh, when I came to Winnipeg, uh, Dave Young, try and find a picture of Dave Young on the web. That man is a cyber invisible ghost. This is, I had to actually crop this photo from something. I can't remember where I found it. But uh, Dave Young uh, began my, my time there as uh, a CEO and president. I quickly drove him into retirement and then Kent took over. And then uh, having destroyed two CEOs at two different Ys, I moved on to Edmonton. So Nick, it's a real thrill to be working with you. Uh, <laughs> We'll see where he goes next. <laughs> One of the things that I noticed, though, is there's this shadow of this guy. 
hanging over all of my Y experiences. And I think this is one of the truly great things about the YMCS Franco, for those of you who haven't met him. But uh, the St. Catherine's Y and Franco sort of permeate the culture of all of these Ys and these, uh, and these CEOs. These all seem to go back through somebody. And I think that this tremendous respect for the tradition, for the elders of the YMCA is a real, real strength. We never want to be shackled onto our history but we never want to not build in our traditions. And I think that this is one of the beautiful things about the YMCA that I've noticed. We do have continuity, and I'm gonna talk just really quickly about this in a minute. I think that one of the challenges that boards have and that organizations have generally is often what they do in terms of balancing tensions. Things are never perfect. There's always choices to be made. Um, whether or not as a, a movement, and anything I say, by the way, is, is certainly not intended as a criticism. It's just an observation of having been in three different associations and seeing how they do things differently. Uh, we often try to balance tensions. We sometimes are not quite so good at using tension as a strategy. We sometimes try to get everything just right so that everybody's a little bit happy. But there are times when a tension within an organization does have to result in going one way or the other. And I've certainly noticed over the last uh, few years, uh, since maybe the mid-2000s, 2004 or so, with the why, that um, there is a, a stronger sense that sometimes you have to use the tension in an organization to go in a particular direction, rather than just trying to make everybody happy all of the time. And I think this is a real change in the way that perhaps the organization operated in its first hundred and some odd years. There's just a realization that the world is a much more complex place, that the boards and the uh, senior administrations of YMCAs have a real obligation to make sure that they're not just keeping everybody happy, not just balancing things, but feeling that tension, deciding what to do with it, and deciding where the direction needs to be. Uh, just four quick examples here uh, before I finish, and that is one that I've seen is certainly mission continuity versus mission adaptation. Um, I've seen it in each of the boards. There are certain things you have to be able to do, whether it's helping a Y that's a little bit in trouble, whether it's forming a regional Y out of separate Ys, um, what used to be is not always what should be in the future, and I think that that tension between adaptation and continuity remains and should remain something that the YMCA will have to deal with in Canada, but I don't think that it necessarily means finding always the right balance between continuity and adaptation. There are just times when things need to change, and we're certainly seeing that in Edmonton right now with the issue of homelessness and the YMCA's contribution to it, where you've got certain buildings that are in place. Um, what do you do with them when they may no longer be the solution? I think planning versus operating, there are people within the Y and all of the Ys that I've been with, I've noticed where some people are just really keen on operating the Y. And some people are keener on planning for the why that could be, should be, and would be. And I think that um, what I've seen in the YMCA since perhaps 2009, particularly when we all gathered in Winnipeg for Portage, is a strong sense that planning is a big part of what we have to do. But I've also seen that uh, that has to play out in solid operations. You know, sometimes you just have to sail the boat in the open ocean when you're trying to fix the sails. You can't always go into dry dock and stop everything. And I think that the why has been brilliant, quite frankly, at having enough people who do operations and enough people who do planning and finding that at some times these people need to have the lead hand and other times these people have the lead hand. I think the real trick in leadership is deciding who should be doing what at which particular time in the evolution of the organization. Planning always leads to a period of operations. Operations always leads to a period of time where you think, we really need to plan. And I think that the Y has done a tremendous job at balancing that tension in recent years. Modesty versus marketing, we've come through this before. If I had to say one thing about the YMCA, coming from a university where we, um, <laughs> we spent a lot of time trying to explain why we're really um, as good or better than the other guys, um, the YMCA has not typically been all that good uh, at feeling strongly that it can state its case. And I think we've been uh, hearing this probably since 2009, although we heard this with respect to uh, a lot of things in Portage. How do you tell your story? I know that uh, Steve and others, when I've been working with them, have always taken the point of view that you let uh, your friends tell your story, and I think that's a great strategy. But I think the world is also a place where it's really hard uh, to make your point. It's really easy to get lost in the noise, and I think that we probably have had to shift a little more towards a marketing mode from a modesty mode. The world sometimes, frankly, does not uh, reward those who are quietly good at what they do, and, and that's all that they do. And finally, advocacy versus neutrality. I remember Stephen Lewis in Winnipeg uh, essentially ripping the organization for being so quiet about what it believes in. 
And I think we're still there. I think we still, uh, when I was in Winnipeg, certainly there was a, a real awareness that we just really can't get to that advocacy mode. We just find it really hard to incorporate it into a board plan and put things into place where we're advocating for what we believe in. Child care was the example that Stephen Lewis used, and I think it's still there. Um, if there's a national child care debate, how can you not be part of it? Uh, I mean, it's okay to be Switzerland, but sometimes you just need to move away from your cuckoo clocks and your chocolate and uh, become a little bit more, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better word, American, in how, in how, you, uh, in how you present yourself. So finding the, that, that balance sometimes, uh, you, you can't be kind of half American, half Swiss. Sometimes you've got to be one or the other, and I think that there will be times when we're going to have to find we need to move not from the middle but to one extreme or the other, and not to an extreme necessarily one side or the other. Overall, though, what I've noticed in the YMCA that I think is its strongest point for me, wherever I've been, whatever the tensions have been, there are always the elements of harmony in the way that boards work with the senior administration. I've been so impressed with the way that that happens in the YMCA. Um, Henry Kissinger, those of you who are old enough like me to remember Henry Kissinger, as Secretary of State of the United, uh, United States, one, uh, he came from Harvard at one point in his career, and he said that the uh, university politics uh, makes me long for the simplicity of the Middle East. Um, if you've been following along at the University of Saskatchewan in the last week, you'll see what happens when boards and senior administrations are not together on things. I have been so impressed by the way that the staff and the boards and the YMCA movement are always in harmony, even when sometimes they have to just adjust the, the singing a little bit to come out in the same way. So thank you so much. Uh, as I say, it's um, three YMCA board is, uh, for me has been a tremendous experience. It has taught me no ends of things about my day job. I often find that going to work is just a little bit disappointing sometimes after I've been to a Y board. It's, a, it's the peak experience of my month in, in many ways. But the, the harmony that's in this movement, in this room right now, is uh, something we should all be very proud of. And uh, I really do appreciate the chance to spend a few moments with you here today. Thanks.